Hello, this is Brad Harvey with Harvey Investment Management, and today we're talking about active versus passive investing. This sounds kind of complicated, but if you stay with me, I think you'll find it's pretty easy to understand. According to historical norms, when it comes to investing, everything was active. Everybody wanted to buy a stock that was going to outperform the market, and they didn't even really know what the market was. A hundred years ago, the major index that everybody looked at was the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which was only 30 companies, a lot of railroad companies. So they would call their stockbroker or their stockbroker would call them and say, hey, you need to buy 100 shares of General Electric because it's going through the roof. Then they'd run out and they'd buy 100 shares of GE and they would sit there and hope that it did well over time. And then maybe their stockbroker called them back a couple weeks later and said, okay, well, we're up $2 in General Electric. Let's sell that and let's buy Exxon. Okay, that's a traditional active methodology. Plus, you could also have a portfolio manager, like in a mutual fund, that's buying and selling those individual stocks, trying to beat the benchmark. What is a benchmark? It's just an index of how overall segments of the stock market are doing. So the Standard & Poor's 500, 500 companies selected by the Standard & Poor's media service to best represent the market overall. Those are large companies in the US. And so those companies are going to include companies like Apple and Microsoft. Now the Dow Jones Industrial Average still exists and it's still 30 companies, although they have changed 100% from when the Dow Jones Index actually started. So back in the 70s, as we're fast forwarding here, so we had only active strategies. John Bogle, the founder of Vanguard Funds, actually said, why try to beat the market when you can buy the market? So he came up with a concept called the index fund, and it was passive. So rather than having a portfolio manager that's trying to buy or sell different stocks on behalf of the fund or on behalf of the clients, he would say, no, let's buy all 500 companies of the S&P 500. And eventually that morphed into what we see today with passive index investing. So you can say, I want to put some money in the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones Industrial Average or the Russell 2000 Small Cap Index or a Mid Cap Index. It's all passive. The only way you change your holdings is if the underlying index changes and then a computer reformulates how that works. So instead of trying to beat the market, you want to try to buy the market. Now, why does this really matter? Well, typically, if you're going to have active investing, it inherently costs more than passive investing because you have to pay for the research and the infrastructure that's involved with that portfolio and management team that is transacting on your behalf. If instead you're just buying the securities that are in a benchmark or the index, then a computer can handle most of those activities. So necessarily, it's less expensive to you as the end user. And then now what we do at Harvey Investment Management that's a little bit different is we take what's called an active overlay of passive investments. So we may decide based on momentum and some other factors, hey, we want to have a little bit of extra exposure in stocks. Maybe that is the S&P 500. And then we want to have the rest in a different index, maybe a bond index. But we make changes to that recipe over time. So it's an active overlay leveraging passive strategies. That way we can maintain a very low cost point for the clients on a relative basis, and hopefully we can deliver a strong risk adjusted return over time. So that's active versus passive investing. This is Brad Harvey with Harvey Investment Management. I hope you have a great day.